Hi everyone, my name is Jackie and I'm the director here at the Hunter House Victoria Museum. While the virus is going on, we'd like to bring some of our collection to you and do some virtual learning. So for the next couple of weeks, please keep checking our social media. We're going to have something new every week to share with you. And this week we're actually going to talk about a subject that's a favorite of mine, and that is Blue Willow China. And if you're not familiar with it, this is a Blue Willow plate. It's part of something called English transfer wear. And there's a whole story that goes with this that I would like to share with your kids today. And so if they're around you, please gather them so they can listen to this story. We're going to learn about these two birds right here, how they fell in love, and how this plate pattern came to be. So we're going to read something called the Willow Pattern Story. It's by Alan Drummond. And if you're part of our children's membership program, this might look familiar. We did this last year at a Blue Willow Tea. So let's get started. In a pagoda beside a weeping willow tree, an old Chinese Mandarin lived with his beautiful daughter, Kung Shi. The pagoda garden was surrounded on one side by a wide, deep river, and on the other side by a zigzag fence too high to climb. This garden was Kung Shi's prison, for she was forbidden to leave it. Her father would say, My child, I have promised your hand in marriage to the old merchant Ta Jin. Until that day, you must hide your face from everyone but me. So the birds became Kung Shi's only friends. And among the fantastic shapes of apple, orange, and fir trees, in the scented petals of peonies and camellias, they called to her all day long and came to her hand for food. On a hill near the edge of the garden in a little house overlooking the landscape, the Mandarin servant Chang worked at his desk. He managed all the old man's business and cared for the plants and the trees. He too knew the birds by name and they came to his window ledge for food. It was spring, and before long, Kung Shi and Chang had fallen in love. But how had this happened? A pair of turtle doves knew their secret. The two birds began carrying messages for them, written on tiny pieces of bamboo across the treetops. One morning, Chang wrote, As the willow blossom falls onto the water, so my heart flies to you. Meet me on the banks of the river as the tide turns under the moon. When night came, the lovers finally met under the weeping willow, hidden from the great pagoda by an apple tree. But at that moment, the Mandarin awoke, and going out into the moonlight, he saw his daughter in Chang's arms. The Mandarin's anger at finding his daughter with a poor servant was so great that he sent Chang away forever. Then he told Kung Shi that she must forget Chang, and marry the old merchant. This she would not do. So she ordered a house to be built, jutting out into the deep river within sight of the great pagoda. Here he locked Kung Shi away. A year passed and one day, the Mandarin took his friend, the old merchant to see Kung Shi. In horror, he saw that Ta Jin had brought an engagement gift. His long fingernails were curled around a box of jewels. He looked at her young face with his old eyes, and showing her the box, he nodded stiffly to the Mandarin. Then the two men went away to plan the wedding. That night, Kung Shi sat weeping at her window. Suddenly, on the moonlit water below, she noticed a floating coconut shell. She reached out, and lifting it up, she found inside a tiny paper message from Chang. With great joy, she guessed that he must be hiding nearby. She wrote a reply on rice paper and made it into a sail and sent the little boat out again onto the water. Her message read, gather your fruit when the willow blossom drops onto the water. This, she hoped, would help Chang to guess the date of the wedding. But no word came from Chang. Right up to the wedding night, Kung Shi waited for another message. Lanterns were lit and hung among the trees and eventually she was taken into the pagoda where Ta Jin was waiting to marry her, that box of jewels opened beside him. But just as the old merchant bent to kiss her hand, Chang, disguised as a boatman, 
leapt out of the crowd of guests. In a moment of fright, Kung Shi snatched up the jewel box, and together the young lovers ran down to the river. The Mandarin chased them, and for a moment they could be seen on the little humpback bridge. Chang leading the way to his boat, Kung Shi carrying the box of jewels, and the old Mandarin close behind them, brandishing a lantern. The tide flowed away to the east and carried with it a little boat. Chang steered the silent waters, and Kung Shi lay safe inside the cabin. Soon they were far away. Their long river journey took them to a poorer part of China where only farming was possible. But they were young and strong and happy to be together. In great secrecy, Chang sold the jewels and bought a farm. At last, Kung Shi and Chang were married. Together, they planted apple trees, which, under Chang's expert eye, always hung heavy with fruit. But what of the old Mandarin? Every year, he sent a new secretary far and wide to search the whole of China for Kung Shi and Chang. Left alone, he grew old and bitter. The garden became wild without Chang's care, and the fruit and blossoms did not appear on the trees. Soon, all the birds of the garden flew away. Only the two turtle doves remained, cooing in their cages where Kung Shi had left them. The birds calling began to make the Mandarin angry, and one day he opened the cages and let them go. Swift as arrows, the birds flew directly east, and at that moment he knew they were flying directly to Kung Shi and Chang. The Mandarin ordered another search, and it was not long before the lovers were brought back to the garden as prisoners. He ordered them to be thrown into the underground passages that formed a maze beneath the pagoda. Day after day, the lovers wandered the blackness, seeking a way out, but each turn eventually led to a blank wall. In the darkness, they felt as though they were traveling in a great circle, and every turn brought them closer to death. Gone forever were their days in the beautiful apple orchards. Never again would they smell the scent of peonies and camellias at night. Never more would they hear the sound of the birds in the garden, nor the lapping of waves against a boat carried down river by the tide. Kung Shi and Chang died together in the great maze underground, and at the same time the lonely bitter mandarin died in the pagoda above. At once the garden fell silent, the breeze stopped, and with this the leaves on the trees were stilled. The waters of the river ceased their movements as if frozen. The pagoda and its surroundings seemed to be bathed in thin blue moonlight. But the gods had taken pity on poor Kung Shi and Chang, and at the very instant when they died in each other's arms, they were transformed into immortal doves. In joy, they flew up into the sky, where even today you can see them, forever kissing each other in eternal love, high above the landscape of the willow pattern. The end. So today we've learned about Kung Shi and Chang, and here they are on our blue willow plates. Thanks for joining us for story time and we'll see you next week. Bye.